Traffic stops, hey, they happen all the time, but what right does that police officer have to search the vehicle? Well, it takes us to this week's case. Falls a real case, real people, a fellow by the name of Timothy Stringer. Timothy was living in Missouri. He was in an automobile and he was coming from an area that was known for drug use. Well, he was stopped by a state trooper. And the state trooper, when he looked into the vehicle, noticed that there were two females in the vehicle. They were both underage, one was 15 and one was 17. Um, Timothy was over 30 years of age. And the officer noted that one of the females seemed to have dilated pupils and be under the influence of some illicit drug, or at least so that was the suspicion of the state trooper. So he called dispatch and he asked for a drug dog to be sent over. Well, in the interim, he uh, asked for identification from Timothy, he got his driver's license. He also said, you know, we've got a violation here. You don't have license on your vehicle. Uh, he did produce, Timothy did produce, in various documents indicating he recently purchased the car and that he lawfully had the vehicle. So he also indicated that he had the plates. And so the officer said, well, okay, uh, that's all fine and dandy. And he is giving him his driver's license, but said, before you drive away, I want to make sure that tail light works and I'd like you to get the plates on the vehicle. So that's taking place and up shows the drug dog. Drug dog arrives with another officer and the dog begins to circle the vehicle and is alerted to the front seat of the vehicle. Well, based upon that, the officer now would have reasonable and probable cause to look into the vehicle and search it, which he does begin doing. And there is a purse sitting there, it belonged to one of the young women. And he opens the purse and he finds that there is a phone in the purse. And he begins going through it to look for text messages and various other information. Lo and behold, one of the things he finds on the phone is a picture of a man and a woman having sex. Well, the gal indicates that that was her and the driver of the vehicle, Timothy Stringer. So the officer asked for her identification. Turns out she is under age. She's under 18 years of age. And lo and behold, Timothy gets charged for child pornography, circulating, taking pictures of someone having sex who's under 18 years of age. All right. Well, he says in his defense, that search should have never taken place. That search should have never taken place because I was stopped as a result of a normal traffic stop. And yes, there was suspicion of drugs, but why and how could this take place with regard to search of one of my occupants, one of my passengers' purses? That should never have taken place. That was unlawful. Well, on the other side of it, it was argued that well, that was all incident to stopping the vehicle. The reasonable suspicion that there was drug activity or the vehicle had been involved in drug activity and searching the purse was something that was incident to the search because there could have been some text messages indicating that there had been some selling and buying of drugs and accordingly that was reasonable search. Okay, well, the case went up on appeal, went up on appeal to the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals for the United States. And up there, the court looked at that, listened to both arguments, listened to the argument saying that was an unlawful search and seizure, listened to the argument on behalf of prosecuting attorneys saying it was a proper search and seizure. And the court came away saying, you know what? We have to look at the totality of the circumstances, the totality of the circumstances. One, the vehicle was coming from an area known to have drug use taking place. Two. The woman in the vehicle, young woman in the vehicle, appeared to be under the influence of a drug. Three, the drug dog that showed up was alerted to the front seat of the vehicle. Therefore, the officer had a reasonable basis to search the vehicle, and that includes the contents of the vehicle. And in this instance, the phone could have had information related to drug dealing, most notably text messages and for that reason, the officer did have a good basis to search the vehicle and to search the phone found within the vehicle. Okay, we bring you this case again so you understand what happens on search and seizure cases. One of the big issues that's confronting the law today is how much searching can be done of smartphones and various cell phones when someone is stopped for a probable cause, whether that's drugs or anything else, because 
Those are important papers that are protected under the Fourth Amendment. We don't think of them as important papers, but text messages, phone messages, etc., are deemed to be papers within the possession of somebody, and the Fourth Amendment protects them. But we also see the way in which that Fourth Amendment doesn't protect them when police officers are engaged in what is a reasonable search, and how does that happen? It's only if the search begins based upon probable cause, and here we saw that probable cause being a reasonable suspicion that the vehicle had either illicit drugs in it or that the people involved in the vehicle were involved in a drug trade. Okay, we bring you this case as we bring you cases every week so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.